And the president's positive test has upended his planned speech to back the police. It comes as a bipartisan group of lawmakers is also calling to turn away from the defund the police movement, with police union leaders echoing the call. Crime is up and we cannot stand for it. The social experiment has got to stop, has got to stop. Today, I think what you're seeing is the radical change in a philosophical approach. I hope it's for, for real. At a press conference earlier today, Republican lawmakers, along with Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar, standing together to call for funding the police amid rising crime. Some affirm the move by President Biden, who was set to roll out a proposal today to devote $13 billion to training 100,000 new officers. COVID has prevented Biden from traveling to Pennsylvania today to make that announcement. But officials said he would seek the money as part of his latest budget request. I chatted with both Republican and Democratic House members about this public safety bill and reasons they're calling for another 100,000 police officers. With Congressman Troy Niels here. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Good to be with you. Congressman, if you could just give us a little bit of background as to what your bill here is aiming to do to uh, actually fund the police. Well, it's called the Public Safety Enhancement Act, and, and really what the bill is, is I looked at the crime bill back in 1994, and, and who was the author of the crime bill on the Senate side? It was Joe Biden. And Article 1 of that crime bill was the COPS grants. That's where they added 100,000 officers to our nation's streets back in 1994. And when I've done some research, I, it has shown that violent crime decreased for several years after they added the 100,000 officers to the streets. So my bill just calls for reauthorizing Article 1 of that crime bill that would add 100,000 cops to the streets. We need it so desperately in this country. You can see when you have less police, you have more violent crime. Our cities are burning. Quite honestly, they're burning. Homicide rates are through the roof. And we have, we have to do something to protect the American people. Congressman, not only are uh, numbers down, but the morale is down within your current ranks. So how would you say is the best way to restore morale to uh, law enforcement officers? I think, number one, it would be the leadership, it would be the President of the United States, Speaker Pelosi and Congress to show support for law enforcement. And how do you do that? You tell them, we are with you and we want to add 100,000 officers to the streets so you can go out there and do your job effectively and do it safely. That's what I think we need to do. And, and so it's going to take some leadership. And it's going to take President Biden and Nancy Pelosi to get this on the House floor. Nancy Pelosi, get this on the House floor because I believe the House of Representatives would pass my bill. Congressman, you're seeing some uh, bipartisanship here. You've reached across the aisle and you, you've gotten a response. Um, how has that been? I think it's been good. We have almost 80 co-sponsors. Uh, I have nine Democrats. Henry Cuellar is one of those. Uh, just a great American, and, and he understands the need for adding more law enforcement to our nation's streets. So I'm going to continue to fight. I don't give up. I believe it's the right thing to do. I think the American people deserve to be able to walk uh, out their front door, down to the little pocket park, or to the grocery store, to the library, and not have to worry about being mugged or assaulted by some thug some thug, and there's way too much of it today. Congressman Troy Nails, thank you. Thank you, my friend. Congressman Henry Cuellar. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure being here with you. Congressman, obviously the uh, Democrats have taken a lot of heat, certain Democrats, for the defund the police movement. You're obviously a Democrat calling to fund the police. Would you say that your, your stance resonates with the majority of Democratic voters? Oh, absolutely. Look, I, I uh, have a, a brother who's a sheriff. I have uh, two other brothers that are peace officers. So it's very, very important that any society, in order to function as a society, you got to have law and order. Without law and order, it's hard to go to school, it's hard to go to church, it's hard to, hard to go to work. So uh, supporting law enforcement is uh, very easy for me to do. So when we talk about funding the police, what types of things do you think that the police need to better support them to do their work? Well, it, uh, two ways. One is personnel, hire more uh, officers, number one. Uh, number two, you got to make sure they have the right equipment uh, so they can do their jobs uh, from vest and other license plate readers and other things that they need that, uh, so they can do their job. But I think the main thing is to hire personnel. And this is one, one of the things we're talking about, trying to hire a thousand, a uh, hundred uh, thousand uh, new uh, police officers. And I think that's important to do. Congressman, the morale for uh, law enforcement is, is low right now. How can you know, the country kind of uh, boosts them up at this moment. 
Well, you know, first of all, it's not only just a pat on the back. Uh, it's making sure that we support them uh, by providing the funding, uh, in my opinion. Number two, providing the equipment. Uh, I see this along the border, you know, talking about, uh, and this time I'm talking about Border Patrol because of what's happening down there. We got to support the uh, Border Patrol. We got to support ICE. We got to support our local sheriffs. In fact, I um, sit in the appropriations where we're, we've been fighting to put more money for a program called Stone Garden. That so they can go ahead and have the overtime and the equipment. So it's not only just a pat on the back, but making sure that we support them. Congressman Henry Cuero, thank you. It's a pleasure being with you. Thousands of spiritual believers traveled from around the nation to Washington, D.C. Today marks the 23rd year since the Chinese Communist Party launched an overwhelming persecution campaign to eradicate Falun Dafa, also known as Falun Gong. Here's NTD's Melina Wisecup with the details. Yes, Falun Dafa is a spiritual discipline rooted in Chinese, uh, rooted in Chinese in culture, revolved around the principles of truthfulness, game. compassion, and tolerance. Many of these practitioners Despite believe that it's their fundamental the human to right to lives, practice this here or any country in the world, including China, and that's why they're standing here today. What China you see behind me is many practitioners from all over the United States who have traveled here for, for this very important belief. moment. So it's the 23rd year so, of the persecution of Falun Dafa. The Chinese Communist Party has cracked down on this since 1999. And one interesting fact dignity, that one practitioner of this discipline told me is that they've been coming here to this very this lawn every single year since 1999, the since the beginning of, of the persecution. And more than two decades later, their persistence continues with supporters of religious freedom speaking out to end the Chinese Communist Party's attempts to eradicate this peaceful spiritual practice. It is always an honor to join you for these important rallies but we shouldn't have to be here. Yet, here we are, once again calling on the Chinese government to end its persecution of Falun Gong practitioners and other religious believers in China. One practitioner of Falun Gong tells NTD about her experience growing up in China, where she was fearful every day about her parents and grandma being jailed for their beliefs. Several times the policemen came to my home and they wanted to arrest my mom and they also wanted to know where my grandma was. And every time I hear the sound of knocking the door, I was really afraid that the people outside the door were the police. She tells us her mother was last sent to a brainwashing center in 2018, and the Chinese Communist Party stripped her grandmother of her pension, removing her source of income. But through all the hardship, she tells us why she continued to practice Falun Dafa. I have been a practitioner since I was a child, and I think a Falun Dafa is really good, and a truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance is right. I think as a human being, I should stick to what I think is right. Attendees are calling on the U.S., the leader of the free world, to further expose the persecution of Falun Gong. Many of the speakers called on Congress to pass the Stop Forced Organ Harvesting Act. You, sir, is intently focused on the terrible ongoing reports of forced organ harvesting of Falun Gong practitioners. This must be condemned by our government, governments around the world, and all peoples of good conscience. Falun Gong practitioners generally have healthy bodies due to their meditative exercises. Unfortunately, this has led them to become victims of the Chinese Communist Party's forced organ harvesting. And it's critically important that U.S. health institutions examine their relationships with Chinese hospitals that we have now documented, participated in transplantations where they executed the patient. After the rally, the Falun Gong practitioners marched in a parade down Constitution Avenue to raise awareness among bystanders. This tradition they plan to continue until the CCP's persecution has come to an end. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Wisecup, NTD News. I was also covering the rally calling to end the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners in China. Congressman Steve Shabbat has been a vocal voice in calling out the crimes of the Chinese Communist Party. While I was there, he told us what needs to happen to end the CCP's crimes against humanity. Congressman Steve Shabbat, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's great to be with you. Congressman, when it comes to the CCP's crimes of forced live organ harvesting, what more or what should the international community be doing? Well, the practice is diabolical. It's hard to 
even think that something like this, forced organ harvesting, would happen uh, in what we like to consider to be a civilized world. Um, so it has to stop. Congress needs to hold hearings. Uh, we need to make sure that the, the scrutiny that this deserves happens. So there have been some hearings, uh, but we've got a long way to go, and, and the Congress really does need to be involved in this. On that note, Congressman, one of your colleagues, Congressman Scott Perry, has introduced the Falun Gong Protection Act, which would hold the CCP officials accountable if they're related in any way to forced organ harvesting with sanctions. Would you like to see a similar companion bill in the Senate? Oh, absolutely. And I would like to see everyone co-sponsor those and they ought to pass. It ought to be a no-brainer, really, for both the House and the Senate to pass legislation like that uh, in a bipartisan manner. I think both parties, hopefully, will be supportive. Congressman, how do you think history will look back at all of the commerce that's been done with China when it comes to the NBA, Hollywood, and Wall Street, looking back at all of these crimes that we're talking about today? Well, I think one has to consider human rights and the human dignity of all mankind. Um, and yes, businesses want to make money, but you also have to look at actually what's happening in that country. And countries need to be held accountable. And the PRC, the People's Republic of China, uh, is one of those that really does need to be held accountable. Congressman Steve Shabbat, thank you so much. Thank you. Congressman Scott Perry wants Falun Gong practitioners to know that they're not alone as they stand against a brutal persecution in communist China. Perry introduced a bill that would allow sanctioning Chinese officials involved in killing Falun Gong practitioners for their organs, an unspeakable crime still taking place as we speak at the hands of the Chinese Communist Party. Now our nation continues to witness the increasingly distressing examples of the Communist Party of China's depravity as they orchestrate their organ harvesting program on the Falun Gong. Just last December, I introduced the Falun Gong Protection Act, which authorizes President Biden to sanction anyone thought to be involved with or contributing to forced organ harvesting in China. China's persecution of the Falun Gong, whether it's forced organ harvesting, unjust imprisonment, or forced labor, is evil. It's perverse. Congress absolutely must act.